Well, praise the Lord. On this Wednesday evening, I pray that that God is continuing to be merciful and gracious to you and keeping you. Amen. I pray that you will stay safe, Christ Temple, and, and to family and friends, wherever you are and who are, whoever you are also. I pray that you are allowing God to, to surround you and to embrace you with his love and his mercy. It is such an awesome thing that God has allowed us just to see another day. Sometimes you just have to be grateful for God allowing you to see the, the next day. Especially with it, so much going on and we are confronted with so much and encountering so much. You just have to thank God from, from day to day now, you know. And so just be grateful, be grateful. And this is really what we have been teaching on about uh, grace. Grace is really a, a, uh, a mindset and a mentality of, of gratitude to be, to be grateful, to be grateful. Out of all God has done for us, you know, you gotta be grateful. You gotta be thankful. Out of all God has brought you through and how God has kept you and, and, and the fact that God has made so many ways and, and delivered you and, and provided and healed and, and brought you through some tough situations, you ought to be able to just be thankful and be lifting him up that Lord, even in spite of, I still owe you some praise. I still had a thousand tongues. It wouldn't be enough just to give God glory and praise. So you just have to, you just have, you just have to, praise has to be a part of you. He inhabits the praises. God inhabits those. God lives within the praises. And so you got to praise him. Amen. Let everything that has breath. Praise you, the Lord. You, we talk about praising them on the loud sound and symbol, the string instruments, and the dance on the harp, the sorcery. You know, let everything that have breath praise you, the Lord. God still deserves to be praised. I'm telling you, you got to praise him now. In the midst of when the enemy is trying to discourage you, you give God praise. In the midst of when you feel it, some some anxiety or uh, uh, feeling of depression and discouragement, you just you just fight through it and say, God, I still owe you some praise. Amen. I still owe you some praise. And so now I want to look back in the book of First Peter. We've been we've been um, we've been dealing with that particular the God of all grace. We've been on that subject. And this is, um, uh, I think after tonight, I think I'm going to uh, be shifting in, and, and there's so much more to be talked about within this subject. You cannot never say enough about God's word when you think you have said something. God will give you something else. And so you really just have to, you can continue on and on and on. And, and, but you have to be led of the Lord and allow God to, to shift you and move into another area of teaching. As, as what he would like for his people to know at that particular time. But for these, the, the, we've been talking about the God of all grace, the God of all grace. In the book of First Peter and the fifth chapter, I want to read um, just the 10th verse. And you should all be able to uh, quote this just about much as we done read it my brothers and sisters, but the God of all grace, of all grace. I tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna skip back to the sixth verse here. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Be sober, be diligent, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh the mouth, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists the steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. 
but the God of all grace, the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, good God Almighty, oh, that's powerful right there. Mm, just to think about that. After that ye have suffered a while. After that you have gone through a situation. After that you have uh, uh, been faced with a, a crisis. Uh, 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 circumstances. Uh, 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 a storm that was so horrific. After that ye have suffered a while. Make you perfect. Good Establish, strengthen, and settle you. That right there ought to let you know that God is not only still in control, but God is going to turn it around. He's going to turn it around. Oh, God, bless your word, Lord. Bless your word. We thank you for who you are, and especially for what you are. Have your way, Jesus. Bless us one more time. Keep, Lord, what you all the sick, those that are sick and shining in, the bereaved families. Keep, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. That verse is a powerful verse. After that you have suffered a while, after that you have been through it a while, God is going to, to make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. We've been teaching on, on the God of all grace, and we've been looking at it from, from the perspective of, of, of the goodness of the saving grace, the sanctifying grace, and the uh, the satisfying grace and God's grace sufficient and and, and sustaining and and and, uh, and and stabilizing. So we've been looking at grace from those perspectives and how good we've been looking at how good God is. That God will give you enough grace, His His divine influence. Amen. God will step in and God will never leave you nor forsake you. But, but tonight I want to look at grace from, a, from another perspective because we only just look at grace from the fact that grace has to, has, just has to be there. But I want to look at a few scriptures tonight and uh, starting in, starting in uh, Romans, the sixth chapter. But what I want to look at is, is that what, what Grace will do when she feel like she's being abused. <coughs> Grace is not going to stand in an abusive uh, situation. And and even the scriptures say. And let's go to Romans the sixth chapter. And I just want you to think about this verse here. The first verse. Just the first verse here. First verse. Romans six and one. Listen at what he says. Listen at what Paul says to the church at Rome. You know, because he's really this chapter deals with being dead to sin and alive to God. But listen at what he says here. He said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? 
Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of God even so we also should walk in the newness of life. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound, that grace may stay? Because grace, grace is not going to stay in an abusive relationship. And we have to look at it from, from sin. If grace is not going to stay, then, then when we think of the, the, the main word I want to look at in this first verse of the Romans 6 and 1 is continue. Shall we continue? Shall we, shall we stay? When we think about continuing, shall, shall we stay in a relationship with sin? Shall we continue to, 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 to go on in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a, in a particular way or in, or stay in the same conditions? Shall we continue to keep doing the things the way we want to do? And expect grace to hang around. Oh my God. I know God, the God of all grace, but but if you going to continue to keep going in the way you've been going and stay in the condition that you are. Grace is not going to be there for you. Grace is not going to be there for you. Because if you're going to continue, if you're going to remain in a relationship with sin, don't expect grace to remain there. Because what shall we say then? Shall we continue? Shall I, shall I continue going the way I've been going and doing the things I've been doing and remaining in a condition that's contrary to God's word but I'm still in the mindset and mentality of expecting the grace to remain grace my brothers and sisters is not going to remain and stay in an re abusive situation just like you would not expect any person or, or, or any or individual to remain in an abusive situation. Grace is not going to stay when she feels like she's being abused. Grace is grace. Great, let me tell you something what grace would do. Grace will pack her bag and she will leave you. Grace will get on a bus or break down bus if she had to. Brakes would get on a train. Brakes would get on a, a airplane. Brakes would get on a ship. Grace will not stay if she feel like she's being abused. And so now shall we continue? Shall we keep going? Shall we keep doing? Shall we keep Keep living and remaining in the same condition. But we want grace to stay. She's not going to do it. She's not going to do it, my brothers and sisters. Grace will be called. We understand that grace is divine influence especially within the inner man the heart and reflected in the life 
charis, Greek word, but it is shown through gratitude and gratefulness. And so now grace, that grace may abound. And so we understand Jesus Christ being full of grace and truth. So now the reality of it is, is that you won't have the, the divine influence. You won't have the help, the necessary help that you need in order to fight against the adversary, to fight against your, 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 the, the thing that we encounter. You won't have that if you want to continue. Shall we continue in sin? That grace, he asked the question. What he asked, what shall we say then? Then he asked another question. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What, what, what do you have to say? as pertain to the fact that if I'm going to continue to do what I want to do, I live the way I want to live, but I've got to understand grace is not going to be there for me like that. Grace is available in its divine influence, but it's there to help me to live and to do what God would help me to do. And so you cannot look at it just thinking that great. You, you when you when you when you get when you get you, and, to, and, and begin to realize, you'll realize that you are all by yourself. Because grace compacted her bags. And she done left because you were not willing to change. I'm just using that analogy. This analogy I want to use is that grace will pack her bags on you and leave you if you don't want to change. Don't you abuse grace. Don't you abuse the divine influence because what God would have to do when, 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 when we abuse and continue to want to stay in a relationship of sin then God has to bring judgment. And so now when we think about the God of all grace, it is an awesome thing, my brothers and sisters, because God can, God is instrumental in helping us and he'll be there for you and God will see you through and God will work some things out and God will bring you out. But you got to have the determination. You got to have the mindset that to God be the glory that I, I'm, I'm determined by God. Because listen to what he said. God forbid in the second verse. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? My God. And even you have to do Self examination, maintenance, spiritual maintenance in how you're living to make sure that God is pleased, pleased with how we live. The God of all grace. <laughs> oh Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Whatever you do. Do not allow grace to leave you. Because if grace leave, my goodness, mercy, mercy. Mm. You don't want grace to leave you. And so now, 
let's look at something in uh, I want you to look at something in Galatia the second chapter the God of all grace what do you do when grace walks out on you how can you survive how can you make it when grace walks out on mm. you. It's a bad place to be when you have to when you have to fight these situations all by yourself. Because grace have walked out. Grace have packed her bags. Grace felt like she's been abused and so she have left. Now, you are, or I, or nobody. Nobody is a match for the adversary without the grace of God, without God's divine influence. You would not have a chance against it without God's grace, God's divine influence. God making a way. God being instrumental. God getting involved. God stepping in. Hallelujah. You would be no match. Look at, look at Galatians in the second chapter. I want to I wanna look at another. We looked at continue. Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue I want to look at another word now, frustrate, frustrate in the 21st verse, but I want to read the 20, 20th verse. I just want to read Galatians 2, 20, and 21. I just want to listen at what he says here. In the 20th verse, he says, I am crucified with Christ. Listen, look at what Paul says. Paul is sharing with us the significance of, of the spiritual death. He shared with us, just like Paul at the, over in Romans also, buried with him in baptism. And so now we are to walk in the newness of life when we was in Romans 6. Now listen that Paul is talking about the same thing. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved and gave himself for me. That when we are. When we are born again. By God. The new birth. And it is, it is signifying a death. That we were died to the. To our old ways. And now we are coming to. A, a new life. New life in Christ. Because the old man is, therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, before all things are become new. So now he said, I am crucified with Christ. Showing that when, when he, when through the death, the death to sin, open up the possibility of new life. Deliverance from sin allows us the opportunity to get to experience new life. And so this is what Paul is saying that I have died spiritually. And I'm walking in the newness of life. That the old Kenneth is dead. But I've been born again. And 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 he said, 
but Christ liveth in me, so my life is joined with Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he's saying, I've, I've been crucified. I've died. I died so I can live. Christ died so I can live. Through his death, burial, and resurrection, I can live. Through my death, spiritually, I can live eternally. What almighty God we serve. But listen at him. He said, and uh, uh, by, by the faith, and, and, and by the faith, believing that through Jesus' death, and me repenting and being born again. So I had to have faith to believe what Jesus did. That not only was it beneficial to me, his death, but it's beneficial to you, it's beneficial to them, and those, and they, and everybody. For the whole world. So now he said, by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Good God. He gave himself for us. Oh my goodness. He gave himself. Oh God. You ought to thank God for the fact he gave himself for you. So that through his death you can live. And your death signifying that you are in Christ. Along with his physical death, you died spiritually. So he died a physical death on the cross. We die a spiritual death through by repentance being baptized and being filled with this precious Holy Ghost. And so, my God, he gave himself for me. Oh, God. I didn't deserve it, but God gave, and the Lord gave himself for me. I wasn't worthy, but he gave himself for me. You ought to praise him for the fact that God gave himself for you. My God. Mm, mm, mm. It didn't matter about status or position or, or, or economical perspective, but God gave himself as a ransom for us. Hallelujah. A kinsman redeemer. He gave himself. Thank you, Jesus. You ought to give God some praise for the fact that he gave himself for you. Mm, mm. Thank you, Jesus. So now listen to what he said. I do not. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Frustrate. In Romans 6 and 1, we looked at continue. But now frustrate the grace. Shall we continue seeing that grace may abound? Now I do not frustrate. Frustrate the grace of God. I do not frustrate. I do not, I do not prevent grace from accomplishing. A purpose. A fulfilling. A particular desire. Frustrate. Are you. Are you preventing God. From. Accomplishing. Or fulfill. 
fulfilling a particular desire. Frustrate. Or also, are you making grace ineffective in your life? The way you live, the way you conduct yourselves, frustrating, or no making grace, or no it, or nullifying it, setting it aside. Because frustrating, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if by righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. It was by Christ's death that we now are able to live righteous. Righteous. Law being a schoolmaster, taskmaster, schoolmaster. But here come grace and righteousness. Action before if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Because if they could have got righteousness within the law, then Christ would not have to die for his sin. So, but now, here, he said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. I do not prevent grace from accomplishing. a purpose or particular my goodness desire frustrate mm. glory to God the God of all grace are you frustrating the grace of God making it of non effect, making it effective, making it non of non effect. It won't have a, it won't be able to do what it wants to do. Because you won't allow yourself to be changed to the point that grace can divinely influence you to be able to walk and to live in a certain way. So that God will get the glory. So that God will be praised. That God will be lifted up. That God will be magnified. That God will be exalted. That God will be glorified. And so now Paul said, he's telling them that I do not frustrate the grace of God because, because I don't want to get in the way because I don't want myself to get in the way of when I need the Lord to divinely, to divinely intervene and intercede on my behalf. Because when I don't know how to get out of a certain situation, I need God to step in. Good God. And this is this is the reality of where we are today, my brothers and sisters. Because, because you don't want to get in the way of God. Because we all need the Lord to, to divinely be a navigation system to us. Because in the midst of anxiety, preachers and lay members and, and, and peoples are, are facing uh, anxiety. Preachers are depressed and, and preachers are discouraged and peoples are discouraged. And some are feeling, my God, all types of emotions. Because now the thing that we are, are, are confronted with psychological and ment mental effect of what we are going through. And so you do not want to frustrate the grace of God because you need God to divine, to divinely 
influence you. You need God to show you how to get out of it. You need God to show you that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil for thou art with me. The rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Come from this over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. You don't want to frustrate the grace of God. His word is a light to my path and a lamp to my feet. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for being who you are. You ought to thank God for not leaving you. You ought to thank God for being there. In the midst of what we are being experiencing, my God. You ought to thank God for allowing his angels to encamp round about you. You ought to thank God for how he watches over your children in the schoolhouses, you on your jobs, and, and, and even in the midst of an invisible situation that God is, an invisible God that he can keep you in the midst of any situation. He's the God of all grace, but you don't want to frustrate him. The grace of God. Oh, you don't want to get in the way of preventing him from accomplishing. When you frustrate, you are nullified. You are setting it aside. You don't want to prevent him from accomplishing and achieving and doing what he wants to do in your life and, 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 and fulfilling a particular desire. Because let's, let me tell you about purpose. Purpose because in, in 2 Timothy, go to get your Bibles and go to 2 Timothy. My God, God is an awesome God. 2 Timothy, the first chapter. Listen to what he says here. And 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 uh we read it a lot of times, and we oftentimes read it in and I'm on I'm on, but the ninth verse is where I really want to go to. He says, in the sixth verse, he says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. This is what we quote all the time. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me his prisoner but be thou partakers of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Listen now what he says in, 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 in the ninth verse. He says, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose. And so now when we, purpose and grace, see, but according to his own purpose and grace, according to what he, his intentions, what God intended to do, what God already already set forth what is already according to his will he has saved us and called us my God not according to our own words but with our own ability but according to his own purpose before the foundation of the world he was predestinated to be saved my God you ought to give God glory you ought to praise him and thank you because God is allowing you to connect with what he already intended to do before creation, before the foundation, before he's made man, my God, in this light and after their image and in their likeness, he blew the breath of life into them and they became a living soul. To God be the glory, but according, not according to our words but according to his own purpose and grace. And so now if you frustrate the grace, you are preventing God from accomplishing a purpose, his purpose, and fulfilling a particular desire. Oh God, I love you. And so because when he saved us and called us, it was because of his own purpose and grace. He saved us 
to connect with what he already intended to do. What was already set forth, good God. What was already in place and grace, his purpose and grace, divine influence. Because if you're going to connect with what's already in place, what God already want to do for you, you have to be divinely informed. God has to show you. God has to give it to you. Listen to what he said, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So don't frustrate God's grace. Don't frustrate it. But it's now, now which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but in 10 verse, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ. Because in Jesus Christ is the fullness. He was full of grace and truth. It is through Jesus how we connect to what God intended. And what was before the world began. Because grace will. Give you divine influence. How to. And it will bless you within your heart. The inner man. But be reflected. In our life. How we live. So what God intended to do for mankind, what was already in place, Jesus is given us in him, in Christ Jesus, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. And when Jesus appeared, what God already had purpose and what he had planned before the world began, we now have the opportunity to not only witness it and experience it, but we can also live it. Thank you, Jesus. We can also live it. But it's now made a manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to life. Good God Almighty. He brought it to life. He brought it through the gospel. Through the gospel. The gospel. The good news. The good news. Through the gospel. So, when we think about the God of all grace, we understand that his saving grace, sanctifying grace, satisfying grace, Stabilize and sustain and grace being sufficient. But then whatever you do, do not frustrate the grace of God. Don't frustrate it. Don't allow yourself to get in the way and prevent God from doing 
what he would like to see accomplished in your life. I pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your people. Why do you protect them? Keep, Lord. We thank you for your divine influence. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, don't let us, or don't let me stop you, or don't let me get in the way of what you want to do, Lord, in my life. Keep me, Lord. In the name of Jesus, keep your people, watch over and protect them. Lord, I give you glory and praise in Jesus' name, because you are the God of all grace. And after that, we have suffered a while. Lord, you'll make us perfect. My God, strengthen, establish. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The God of all grace. Thank you. He'll sell you. Pray for you, my brothers and sisters. Don't get in the way of what God wants to do and what he's doing. Because he's working it out. And he's turning the stuff around. He's correcting some stuff. He's rebuilding some things. He tore down some stuff and rebuilding. Don't get in the way and watch God work it out.